say, either you're gonna tell a story or you're gonna grab people's attention with a statement, okay? Let's practice. We're talking about the same speech we just watched, okay? Uh, tell me a statement that she could have used that would grab people's attention. Remember, I already gave one. I said she could have said, if you eat meat, you're gonna burn in hell. Who wants to give it a shot? A statement that she could have said to start her speech to grab people's attention. If we eat meat, we are all going to die. Yes. Somebody else. <laughs> Nuggets are from hell. What? Nuggets are from hell. Nuggets are from hell because of them. Okay, one more person. What statement, what other statement could she have used to open her speech? If you eat chicken nuggets, you're a bad person. If you eat chicken nuggets, you're a bad person. Good. So that's how you start a speech. You start with a story or you start with a statement. And you do omit the whole intro, I'm going to tell you about my grandparents. No. Immediately start. She said, when I was three years old. When she said that, everybody's like, hmm, but you're a kid. When you were three years old, what? And they started paying attention. So you start with a story or with a statement that grabs people's attention. Okay? This was a persuasive speech. How do we know it was a persuasive speech? What is the meaning of the word persuasive? What, what, what does that mean? Trying to convince. Trying to convince, perfect. So a persuasive speech is a speech in which you are trying to convince somebody of your point of view. What was she trying to convince her audience of? Become vegans. To become vegans. And vegan. try another type of food. Perfect. So that was what she was trying to convince them of. Okay. Did she give them examples of how to do that? Yes. Give me I, one example of, of what that she gave. A chocolate with no diary. Yes. Chocolate with no diary products. Ch chocolate without milk. Good. What, what other example? Example for for a statement, do you say? No, exa no, examples of ideas that she gave to, to change between eating meat and becoming vegan. Remember, she spoke about, you can go on the internet and get recipes. What else did she say? She said that she can actually eat chicken nuggets, but just she buy a vegan chicken yeah, nugget. They're not made of chicken. Good. Okay, the people who are listening to her, do you think they were really enjoying, enjoying her speech? Yes, because they were laughing and I think that's enjoyed the speech. Yes, so who were these people? Were there kids her age or were these people adults? All adults. people, adults. I, also see, I also saw a kid and I also saw an adult. So it was like a mixed crowd, right? Yes. Okay, so, when you give your speech, that's something else you need to remember. You need to be able to speak in such a way that people of all different ages are interested in what you're saying. Because suppose she had got up and said, uh, good morning, people. My name is Genesis Butler, and today I'm going to talk to you about my Barbies. Who would be interested? Only no one. little girls, if there are any little girls there. Or no one, exactly. Not interested. So when you prepare your speech, you have to be sure that it includes everybody of all different ages. Okay, how did she end her speech? Thank you. Uh-huh, right before that? It's called- the last thing about our war. What? Uh, the, was telling the bad things that the meat can produce to the air. No, that was it at the beginning. Way at the end, she did she, something. She, uh huh. She 
he did something like be algo así, teacher. Uh, I don't remember. We know our uh, our planning. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. So that's called a call to action. It's called call to action. And what this means is that you tell people um, that they have to do something to make a change. So that's what she was talking about. Remember in the end she said, uh, you can make the world that I want this earth and you can help us make it better for the people of my generation, blah, blah, blah. That's a call to action, okay? Tell people what they need to do, okay? So that was an example of a persuasive speech. She, and then after that, she said, thank you, that's it. So you start with a story, and she's not the only one. There are hundreds of other kids who are also doing this on TED. You start with a story or a statement. You never start with, bueno dia, buenas tarde, good morning. No, you don't do that. A lot of people have a problem with that because people think that when you come out, you have to say good morning. You don't. You really, really don't. You don't. You can just start talking. And that's one of the reasons why I keep insisting when you turn in your audios, don't be telling me no good morning, teacher. How are you? Have a, no, 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 don't. Don't do that. Mm -mm, no, because that's not the correct way to do it. What are you looking at? Daniel, the magazine. Hello, mm -hmm. Okay, so omit that part. Omit that part. Go straight into the story or the statement. And in your persuasive essay, you're gonna try to, in, in speech, you're gonna try to convince the person of something. And in the end, there's gonna be a call to action, telling them, do this because I want this. And then you say thank you and you sit down. Okay, so let's practice. Let me think of, of a, a topic. I want you to per, persuade. Okay, good, got a topic, simple. Stay at home, that's gonna be the topic. And you're gonna try to persuade people to stay at home. You're not gonna give me the whole speech. We don't have time for that. I want you to think about a statement or a story. No, let's go with only statement this time. Stories might be too long. Statement that you could use to present your persuasive speech about why people should stay at home during the quarantine. So I'm gonna give you a few minutes to think, okay? A statement, remember, that statement has to grab people's attention. So it's not gonna be good morning, it's not gonna be uh, 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 no. And it's not gonna be like, oh, um, quarantine, uh, no. One statement, one sentence that's gonna grab people, okay? I'm gonna give you one minute to think. Remember the topic is, what's the topic? Stay, Stay at home. home. Stay at home. Stay at home during the quarantine. And you're gonna to try to convince people to stay at home. All you're gonna do right now is give me that opening statement. So think. Do -do. The outside is the dead waiting for you. Okay, so let's fix that statement out. Death is waiting for you on the outside. Death is waiting for you on the outside, good. Okay, the rest of you, do you think that's a good opening statement if he just got up like, death is waiting for you on the outside? Would you pay I would think he's crazy. <laughs> what the hell, boy? <laughs> but would you pay attention? Yeah, sure. Yes, good one, Daniel. Who's next? You don't stay home. She's just practicing. Come on, people, one statement that's going to just grab people's attention. It doesn't have to be long, just short. Pow. Let everybody say like, whoa, I want to listen to this. You're killing your own family if you don't stay at home. 
Okay, that's a good one. You're killing your own family. But you know what? You could just leave it there. You're killing your family. And everybody's like, what? And then you say the rest. Good one, Janice. Good one. Okay. Who's next? You're getting closer to the day when you go outside. I didn't hear that. You're closer to the dead when you go outside. You're closer to death when you go outside. Good, you're closer to death when you go outside. Mm -hmm. I like that, good one. Who's next? Three of you missing. Four. Yes. Do you know that from 1,000 people, 6,000 come home infected with the coronavirus? Okay. From 1,000 people, 6,000 come home infected with coronavirus. <laughs> I don't get that. Repeat that. Uh, from 1,000 people, 6, 600 come home with infected with the coronavirus. Okay. So for every 1,000 people, 600 get infected with coronavirus. Good one. Good one. Like it. Who's next? Do you want to die? <laughs> Good, that's it. Do you want to die? <laughs> okay, two of you missing. Stop killing yourself getting out. Stop killing yourself by going out. Yes. And Isabella. If you don't stay home, you will kill everybody. <laughs> Good. If you don't stay home, you will kill everybody. Okay, people. So that is how you start a speech. You don't, one more time, it's not good morning teacher and classmates, today we're gonna talk about my cousin, no. You go a, for a, 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 a statement or a phrase that's catching people's attention or you start with a story. Okay, good. Now, we're gonna go to the end of the same speech. Remember, the persuasive speech that we're working on right now is about the importance of staying home during the quarantine. So how would you end this speech? Okay, let me play for you one more time her last few words so that you can get this. Give me two seconds and then let me share my screen. Pay attention to the last few words she says because we're gonna practice this. I know, you do too. And you know what? I still love Let's go back a little future more. for all of us. Uh -huh. I choose is that by changing what you choose to eat, you will become a part of healing our planet, saving animals, and ensuring a bright future for all of us. I really, really love this world. And I know you do too. And you know what? I still love chicken nuggets, but now they are vegan. So let's help the earth. <laughs> so let's help the earth and all living beings on this planet by making conscious choices about the foods we eat and let the healing begin. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> okay. So her very last statement was let the healing begin. Okay. And that's what she used to close. That's the last part of her call to action. She told people to make the world a better place because her generation depends on it, blah, 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 blah. Let the healing begin. Okay, so now you're gonna work on how you would end that same speech. We're still doing the speech on why people should stay home during the, corona, during the quarantine. So what would be the last few words that you would say before thank you? Okay, I'm gonna give you a few minutes to think. We already started the speech, with a statement that grabbed everybody's attention. And now we're gonna go all the way to the end. The last thing that you would say uh, before you say thank you. Okay, let's practice that in our heads and I'm ready when you are. Sure, I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay, okay. Isabella, go, Isabella. Stay home and say the word. <laughs> <Good one. laughs> Who's next? Me, tell me. You, you can be a hero if you stay inside your home. Yes, good one. 
who said me teacher? Uh, Janice? Yeah. Me teacher, Diego Lopez. Diego, go. Don't be dumb. Stay at home and take care. Okay. <laughs> A little aggressive, but yes, good Maybe one. Maybe you're not going to die, but other people will. Ah. So if you love this planet, stay at home. Yes, good one. Who's next? Stay at home and save a hundred lives. Mm -hmm. Very good. Janice, Daniela? Um, stay at home and take care of grandma and granddad. Ah, nice one. Nice one. Who doesn't love you? His grandma. Well, some people seem that they don't because they're always on the street when they don't have to. Daniela? Um, if you love yourself, you love your family, and you appreciate your life, stay at home and take care. Perfect. See? Do you see how easy it is? Now, about the little girl in the video, do you think she was a little nervous? Voice shaking. She was yeah. nervous. She was, she was nervous. Herself. So, so how how do you think she handled it? What did she do to relax herself? She used to it naturally. Okay, but she had this little technique that she was doing. I don't know if you paid attention to it to relax herself. She kept doing like this. While she was talking, she was moving like this. That actually helps you to relax because if you want to give a speech and you're nervous and you're stiff like this, you're just going to feel a lot worse. So by moving, probably from one leg to the other, it helps you to relax. Do you remember when you were a baby and you were started crying? Well, you probably don't remember, but when a baby is crying, what do mothers do? Do they grab them and stay like this stiff? What do they do? They grab the baby, right? And when you do that, the baby relaxes. So movement is extremely relaxing for humans. And if you've noticed old people, they're usually sitting in a chair, in a rocking chair, going like this, okay? It's relaxing. So one thing that she did to be able to control her nerves, because nerves are good. There's nothing wrong with being nervous. That's perfectly okay, that's normal. And you can actually say something like excitement. So one thing she did was that she was very gently rocking herself from one foot to the next very gently another thing that she did was that she giggled did you notice that she was giggling like sometimes when the people started like interrupting her she'd go like <laughs> you know did you notice that that's also another way for you to relax your nerves because if the people interrupt you sometimes you just forget what you were going to say so for that not to happen she would just laugh a little bit and then continue her sentence. Okay, so those are two very important techniques for calming yourself when you're giving a speech. So let's go back to the beginning and let's go over this. How do you start your speech? Good morning, teacher and classmate. Today I'm going to talk about fences. No. No. How do you start your speech? With a statement. With a story or a statement. With a story or a statement. Good. And a statement that grabs people's attention. Because if you just say a statement, you could say like, eh, this morning is wonderful because the sun is out. That's a statement, but nobody's paying attention to that. So it has to be with a story or a statement that grabs people's attention. Okay. Number one. Two. What type of speech was this? Persuasive. Persuasive speech. And what do we do in a persuasive speech? Convince people. Convince people. We try to convince people of our point of view. Good. Third, what can you do to relax yourself while you're giving the speech? Two things. Move to one side to another. Yes, but not like this, like, no, not like that, you know, gently. Like nobody notices, but you're doing it. And what other thing can you do? Laugh. Laugh or smile, that always helps. Good. 
Uh -huh, just like that. How do you end your speech? Thank, Thank you. you for coming and listening to me. This is very important. How do you end your speech? What did we say this is called? I told you the name like 15 times. Call no sé qué, no sé what. A call to action. A call to action. Call to action. And what is a call to action? Where you tell people what? To do something because it helps something. Exactly. To do something because you're trying to convince them to come over to your side. Good, so that's called a call to action, call to action. Good, okay. okay. Can I ask something to everyone? Can you do what? Ask something. Okay, ask them. Do the little girl convince you of being vegan? <laughs> yes. She doesn't. No. I'm vegan. <laughs> no. Okay, so who's gonna be vegan now? Me don't. <laughs> I used to be vegetarian, but since the quarantine, I can be picky with things that I eat. Okay. So, but you're okay. So you're a vegetarian. I like uh -huh. too much. I like too much the burgers for let them flop. Teacher. Yes. Yeah. Teacher. Uh -huh. I think I start to be vegan like three years ago. Uh huh. I'm vegan already, so I get convinced. You eat pizza the last year. You're a liar. Daniel, they say you had pizza last year. Okay, Daniel is, is gone. He just he just left us. Okay. Uh yeah, but she got you thinking though. Did she get you thinking? No. So you're like you're like hamburgers, lettuce. Oh, in that type, no. The what? In that type, like, well, what could I prefer? I obviously go to the burgers and the pizza and those things. But <laughs> thinking about, whoa, it, that's a lot of water. Yeah. I really think about that. Yeah. So there was part of it that got you thinking. You see, that's the important thing. I don't think that the intention is that immediately everybody needs to know I'm going to be vegan now. But at least you start thinking about it and you're like, oh. So maybe I should eat a little bit less or something. It, it makes you thinking. Okay, anybody else? Got it? You got thinking? You got any ideas? No? Okay, so your assignment, sorry about that. Your assignment next time is going to be simple. I'm going to give you a topic in our next class. I'm going to give you a topic. And you're going to do exactly what we did today. You're going to give me the opening statement and you're going to give me the closing statement, not the whole speech, not yet, okay? In the future, we are going to do the whole speech and we're going to have to do that by Zoom, of course. So this is just for you to go practicing how you really give a speech. So remember, people, this whole good morning teacher and classmate, today I'm going to tell you about my, my skirt. We don't, want, we don't want that anymore, okay? You're going to... Uh, in, 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 in the assignment for next week, you're going to either start with a short story or a statement, and you're going to give the closing statement. It's, you know what? I should give you the topic for next week, but you probably forget it anyway. No, I'll just surprise you next week with the topic. And that way it's more fun because you get to think and you don't want to ask somebody to help you. Okay, so um, if you ever have some extra time, go to YouTube and look for TED, TEDx talks and you're going to see that there are a lot of people old people young people kids giving these talks and you're going to notice that all of them start in the exact same way with the statement and they all end in the same way there are even people talking giving jokes but they start in the same way okay so do you have any questions for today any questions no so you have a clear idea of what we're going to be doing next week and next week it's going to be for a grade okay i'm going to give you the topic next week and you come up with an opening statement or story and a closing statement that's it and probably in the future uh soon we're going to do the entire speech but probably not everybody the same day okay people so it was a lot of fun having you here go enjoy the rest of your tuesday
Bye-bye. I'm hungry. See you next time. <laughs>